Hi, everybody. Are we in focus this time? <laughs> it's hard to tell. My glasses <laughs> apparently, are foggy. Apparently, we weren't in the last video. That's okay, though, because you know, it was focused, so it was totally intentional. <laughs> I don't even know that it was out of focus or if the camera was just foggy, because it was so ungodly cold that night. Yeah, it might have been. <laughs> but anyway, I'm in a great mood, because I didn't see shit tonight. <laughs> Laugh it up, Chuckles. Yeah, well, you know. Karma's a bitch, ain't it, fucker? <laughs> you should believe in God now. <laughs> God stepped in and saved you and punished me for my sins. It's not God, that was all AMC scheduling, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's run by God, apparently. <laughs> he listened to what you said during God's Not Dead and wanted to say, No, Dave, I'm alive, motherfucker. <laughs> Brad wanted you to go see that old-fashioned movie. Don't worry, I'm gonna step in and save you, just like I did Zacchaeus. Schedule it to play at <laughs> at what, like 4:30 in the 4:20. afternoon. 4:20. 4:20. Because of course it was 4:20. 4:20. Only fucking time of day this movie's playing. Sorry, man, I got a day job. I I can't I can't afford to miss those. No, hours. good. Everyone else has a day job. Well, you yeah, know, we're all fucking adults and shit. Yeah, I'm the 33 year old going to go see Old Fashioned at 4:20 in the afternoon. Oh my god! <laughs> On a Wednesday. On a Wednesday. <laughs> and God made it to where I didn't find out about this fucking movie until it's going to end this Thursday. Because you know this shit was playing last week, probably. Oh, God, you you got on Twitter and you were so excited. You're like, I'm going to get Dave and we're going to go. We're going to go. We're going to fucking do this. And I immediately became resigned. Like, yeah, fuck it. We're going to go on Wednesday, I guess. Resigned. Nope. And then... <laughs> you look forward to this shit, too. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> and then yesterday, I get a text from Brad. It's a so, only playing. It's only playing at 420. 420. Like, sorry, buddy, I gotta work. I know you do. <laughs> but, I just but I, wanted you to tell it to my face. <laughs> but I'm off work, and I'm here for you now. That's good, at least. You know, just a little friendly support. I can't even, I can't even make it like Kirk Cameron saving Christmas and be like, everyone else should go see it, because it ends tomorrow. <laughs> <sighs> Fuck. So, um, how was it? Surprisingly good. It, oh my god. Oh my so, god. So it, First of all, just even now having sat through this fucking movie, um, just simply going in there into that theater by myself. <laughs> by myself. There was a couple in front of me in line. And it was an old, it was, uh, they were maybe in their 40s, maybe early 50s. And so I thought, like, okay, they're probably here to see the same thing, too. So they're in front of me, and they say to the ticket lady, they go, oh, two for Kingsman. <laughs> so like, they tickets, derp to derp, I'm right behind them, like, one for old fashioned. <laughs> All right, ticket. Old fashioned. I'm in that theater like by myself for a pretty long time to think about how stupid I am before other people start rolling in. Eventually, other people came. This 80 year old couple who sat in the back, and then. Um, but they wanted to be alone so they could make out. <laughs> bullshit. Not if they agree with anything that's in this movie. That's a fucking sin. Making out's a sin. This movie ends with a kiss on the cheek. That's the most taboo thing in this movie. It ends with a kiss on the cheek. It's a movie named after a euphemism for a hand job. And an alcoholic <laughs> beverage. I know. Every Two things this movie is holy against. Yeah, no, it, anytime we go out from now on, I'm going to have them bring you an old-fashioned. Oh, I should have snuck one in. <laughs> I needed a drink so much. This was physically hard to sit through. This was... Okay, just to comparing it to the the religious movies, I think I have found the worst. I think filmmaking wise, Kurt Cameron Saving Christmas. How could anything all... be worse than yeah. Kurt Cameron Saving? Like filmmaking wise. Filmmaking wise, like I on don't... a technical yeah. aspect, Kurt Cameron Saving Christmas is the worst movie I have ever yeah. seen. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen a lot of mm -hmm. movies, like shit on the internet. Fan films, yeah. like people's school projects. Mm -hmm. Kirk Cameron Saving Christmas is the worst made thing I've ever seen. It's, 
I can at least say like that I've seen in the theater and that got kind of a mainstream release. I can at least say that about Kirk Cameron saving Christmas. Um, so that movie will probably always be the number one spot in terms of what is technically filmmaking wise, story, character, all that, the worst. This movie. Well, Kirk Cameron saving Christmas. Nothing else. One of the worst things I've ever seen. Entertaining as, as holy fun. hell. Oh yeah, that was probably the easiest one to sit through. Oh. It really, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, because um, it didn't leave me like angry and be and like rage filled. It was just shocking and like, wh what? <laughs> this movie was harder to sit through than Mom's Night Out, which I thought was horrible to sit through but the stuff in mom's night out like all the problems that we had during that movie like oh she really just needs to see a therapist and shit yeah. like that like her stress crippling and all of that that kind of just made up like the first half hour 40 minutes of that movie and then the rest was shenanigans just imagine if the entire movie was just awful things like that and that is this Ooh. for two hours for two oh. hours oh my god and I know that this movie is supposed to be like the religious person's um, answer to Fifty Shades of Grey. I can guarantee you that's what this fucking movie is. It's... I'm sorry, there's a medium between Fifty Shades of Grey and this shit. Yeah, yeah it's Caligula. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's not Caligula. But. Uh, oh, my God. The, it, I've seen a review for this movie on IMDb that says finally a romance movie for people who don't want fucking in every movie and they're citing Fifty Shades of Grey and they're angry because Fifty Shades of Grey made $500 million at the box office and this movie is made next to nothing. I'm sorry, like, there, there's a lot... <laughs> there's a middle ground between this shit and Fifty Shades of Grey! A go lot see of any. If anything. you're the type of person who's gonna say some shit like that, go see any goddamn fucking Nick Sparks movie that's out. This that, movie makes. There's a lot of fucking Nick Sparks movies. But compared to yeah. something like, yeah, they're all kind of chaste. Yeah, <laughs> this movie makes a Walk to Remember look like nine and a half weeks. <laughs> the guy in this movie is so bad that he made Christian Grey look like Sean Connery in terms of charisma. <laughs> this is insufferable to sit through. I was at the end of it, like I'm fucking walking out of the theater in that kind of hunch walk that you do, like when you leave something like really fucking horrible. Oh yeah. Like yeah. You, it just hurts you to move your limbs yeah, because you should have done it hours ago. And and your head's hung down because you were ashamed to like you don't want yeah. to really see you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the fucking concession guy looks at me and goes, "Are you okay?" Like. Dude, I just sat through one of the worst fucking things I've ever seen. This is easily the worst romance movie I've ever seen in my life. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Easily. Star 80 is a better romance than this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Com compared to this movie, Lovelace is the feel-good rom-com of the year. Oh my god. And so the fucking concessions guy's like, you okay? I'm like, dude, I just saw fucking Old Fashioned Man. And the guy's like, oh, oh, dude, you should have told me. I wouldn't have charged you for your ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch! Well, actually, I used my rewards on my Stubbs card, so... Well, I'm glad. I'm, uh, at least, t technically speaking, you didn't really pay for this. Yeah, so fuck you, Old Fashioned. <laughs> this... I haven't really gotten into what it's about. Is the radio on? It, um, very lightly. I could hear a little talk. I think that was still petty. I'm so sure. the movie is about a former frat boy named Clay who runs a woodworking shop named Old Fashioned. So, so that a way, former like like douchebag frat kind of frat boy or like uh, I'm in a frat. Like womanizing, hard drinking, did drugs, slept with a lot of women, and also created Go Girls Gone Wild. Dead serious. Created Girls Gone Wild and now runs a wood shop. Yeah. 
I'm sorry. I mean, it's called like it's not called it, it's called College Girls Exposed or something like that. <laughs> and they flash back to it a lot during the movie. A so lot. our and Christian hero in this is a former pornographer. Is a former yeah is a former pornographer who slept with like hundreds of women. And you constantly want to see a movie about this guy, like the and, guy that he used and, and, to be, and then changed his ways. Changed his ways and became he, a woodworker, just like our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, <laughs> and he's also. Fucking 45 years old with a haircut of a 20 year old. Aww. It would be like if I it'd be like if Brad Pitt had Justin Bieber's haircut. Like it looks weird. It looks so weird. <laughs> so at one point, yeah, really early on in the movie, he finds like the DVD of his old ways sitting around and it flashes back to it and in this when it's showing the girls take their top off they're like crying they're like <laughs> like that and also on the verge of just passing out right on the floor so this is less like that, that's less like girls gone wild and a little more like eight millimeter uh, yeah and more like he just filmed a lot of date rape <laughs> So those people have never seen even a commercial for Girls no. Gone Wild. No. No. Not at all. Because even I will say, Girls Gone Wild is a little atrocious in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like, it is taking advantage of yeah. young drunk girls because yeah. none of them are fucking sober. Yeah. But at the same time, they're not being raped and none of them are crying. I don't remember any... Girls Gone Wild, in which the girl on the dance floor was... <laughs> Daddy! Daddy? Really? She, like, kind of mouthed something. I might have misheard that a little bit, but she, it looked like she kind of mouthed something like that. But that that could be I, me I, really just, mishearing like, was that. Was there a fucking gun to her head in the club? They should have really shown more of that, Dean. No wonder this fucking guy is in hiding. Jesus. So this new girl moves to town... <laughs> And she's the free-spirited girl named Amber. So free-spirited Amber. By free-spirited, I mean she dresses like Carrie, our friend Carrie. Oh, okay. Um, she dresses like Carrie, has like a dream catcher in her, uh, on her mirror. And um, she, uh, she has a cat on a leash. And um, So the Christian version of the Manic Pixie Dream Girl. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. So she moves into town, and he is her landlord, because she lives, I believe, like above his work woodworking shop. So he is her landlord, and <clears throat> I don't even know how to get into this. There was so much stuff I wanted to get into when I was talking about this with Sarah earlier, but I had to save it. And now that I'm at this point, it's this been like an where hour. Where do you start? <laughs> okay. So, so he cat on a leash. Yeah, there's a cat on a leash. Uh, that was an unhappy fucking cat. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because they dubbed its meow. Alright, so so he's a date rapist and she abuses animals. <laughs> the cat see the cat looked comfortable. I mean they again they dubbed the cat's meow, so that was a little funny. Was it a person who No, I no, no, I don't think it was. Um so she has a problem which she needs her stove fixed. She needs her stove fixed, so she calls him because he is her landlord. But he... No, no okay, this is before she needs her stove fixed. Um, when he is just simply giving her the keys to her apartment, he refuses to go inside of it. Like, she is standing there like, aren't you gonna, like, show me around or something? He's like, no, no, I can't. And she's like, why? And he's like, I can't. I made a vow to never be alone with a woman. <clears throat> This continues through the whole movie. Okay, okay. This is a running theme through this movie. Giant fucking red flag. Don't take the key. Grab mm. your shit. Fucking run. He's a rapist. It gets better. <laughs> it gets fucking better. Okay, so she's like, that's weird. All right, maybe shouldn't fucking be a landlord. Or at the least... Renting to people who, because of his religious reasons, doesn't want to physically be in a room with. Always somebody of the opposite sex. I'm sorry, that's sick. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I know I, I 
know so many religious people. I have some, I have them in my family. I went to religious schools 12 years of my life. I've never seen that before. That's a level of absurdity. Mm. That, that is, it, it, that's kind of like that. The only thing I can like hearken it to is like a guy going, well, I'm sexually attracted to children, so I shouldn't be allowed alone with them. Uh-huh. Like, I don't want to act on it, but I shouldn't be allowed alone with yeah, them. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> and then later when she has a problem with her stove, he goes up there and makes her wait outside until she fixes it. He gives her a blanket because it's cold outside. He gives her a blanket, makes her wait. This happens throughout the whole movie. He makes her wait outside with a blanket, does not let her come in until he is done fixing the stove because for his reasons, he does not want he he has made a vow to never be alone with somebody and then she starts asking him about this because why wouldn't any rational person ask somebody about this no a rational person would run you remember when i told you that this movie was a hundred percent insufferable to sit through like yeah. from the beginning you know that this is not going to get better you know this is going to continue to be just as punishing <laughs> this shit i'm telling you about happens within the first five minutes of the movie and it's a two-hour film and shit like this continues through the whole goddamn thing. And so he's making her wait outside, and he says he says he doesn't believe in dating because dating is just small talk that leads to sex, and then you do more small talk after sex. He says, the only time I want to kiss is when I'm giving my wedding vows. Until then, it's a kiss on the cheek. And then, um... So he can't be in the same room with them. They can only do things that he... This is the religious answer to Fifty Shades of Grey. That's what it is. It's his insane fucking rules that he is indoctoring this poor woman into. And, <laughs> that shit's beyond crazy. Like, And yeah. this conversation is happening just be, when he's finished, when he's fixing her stove. I'm not summing up later on conversations. Yeah, yeah, this, this is... First five minutes. Yes. I mean, I completely get if you're a, a, a person of faith and you want to wait till marriage. Yeah. And you, if you're not a person person of faith and you want to wait to have to sex each till their marriage. Own, to each their own. Good for you. Yeah. If you have the dedication and the willpower to do that, great. Me, personally, I don't want to be in a long term commitment with anybody if there's not sexual compatibility. Yeah, I agree. There. I completely agree. And, and, and the first step to any of that shit is a kiss. Uh-huh. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And if you're going to and if you're looking for this movie is the if this movie speaks to you in any way shape or form, have fun dying alone. <laughs> like seriously, um like what, if you're like this, did he become a f like a oh, fetish? It, ex what it explains fuck? it explains later on why he's the way that he is. But so anyway, so yeah, he makes her wait outside, and he continues to make and but she she likes him because she's attracted to him. You can't convince me that there's any other reason she likes this person other than she thinks he is hot. Yeah, she wants some dick. Yeah. And so she wants to keep seeing him, but he doesn't want to go out on dates because date will lead to, I don't know, bad stuff. So she keeps, she keeps wrecking things in her house so he'll be forced to go up there and fix them. That way they can talk when he's fixing her shit. So she's they're both waiting outside. sociopaths. Yeah, she drills holes in her refrigerator. She um, Does he not figure out that... Oh, she does. They, or, I'm sorry. He does. Yeah, he does. He figures. Yeah, he figures out. He figures out that shit. Um, he figure. He figures out that shit. And she says, "So are you finally gonna ask me on a date, or do I have to keep wrecking more of my shit?" And that was when she like took the hinges off of her like screen door or something like that. And, and, and that's oh my, when you evict that crazy person. I will. <laughs> and run. And she should run, and he should evict her. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'll get to their first date in a second. He has a couple of friends. He has black friend, um, and then he has, um, and then he has shock jock friend. Like I don't know, it's fucking Chuckle and Charlie or some shit like that. Who's like a former frat boy friend of his, but is like still his friend. Um, I don't know why. Blackmail photos. Uh, pro fucking probably. I I don't know because th because the guy is an ass. Like oh, both of them are assholes in their own way. But 
I, I don't know why they put up with each other. Like, so they're constantly listening to this guy's shock jock show, even though it's, <laughs> it's, it's a stereotypical shock jock kind of show. Like literally the first thing you hear him say is, man, women are stupid on the air. And then he goes into like some horrible, like 90s stand up routine on why women are stupid. <clears throat> this I, I, oh, in the scene. I, where, I can't believe I'm actually saying these words, but man, I'm I'm really glad I had to work instead of doing a movie. <laughs> you wouldn't have liked this movie. Well, so, <laughs> we knew that before you I did went. not know it was going to be this bad. But you knew I for knew a fact that I wouldn't like it. No, I didn't think I would like it. I didn't think it was going to be. Of all these movies, the hardest one to sit through? I didn't really think so. Well, I mean, not that I gave it much thought, but I try not, I try not to give that much thought. I just like to go in blind. I didn't even watch a trailer for this. Oh, these are, these are the most fun to go in blind. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, what are All we? of these movies I've gone in blind. <clears throat> Me too. A trailer occasionally, but that's about it. I might have gotten a trailer for Heaven is for Real. Oh, but we, that was a lot more mainstream than yeah. something like this. Um, so, uh, oh, so Black Friend has the worst proposal scene ever put on film. So, Clay, the main guy, and Amber, the girl, they're at this party. It's his wife's it's his wife's birthday. It's the black guy. It's the black guy's wife's birthday. And so they're all there and everything. <clears throat> and um, so they, the black guy and his girlfriend have a kid together. And um, the wife is opening, or I'm sorry, the girlfriend is opening up presents. And one of the presents is an engagement ring. <laughs> so he's proposing to her. And, and he's, he's like, what? Really? But you said we didn't need a piece of paper to define our love for each other. And then he's like, I told you I was going to one day make an honest woman out of you. And then she's like, I don't like that. She's like, I'm just joking. She's like, yeah, well, it's not funny. Like, and this is supposed to be like this really happy moment that has like an argument, an awkward joke argument in the middle of it. And this is all shot like Tyler Perry would shoot this scene better than this scene is shot. Those this, are big there, words. There's about 50 people in this scene, and this proposal scene is shot um, like, okay, the, the look on the guy is like that. <laughs> Same with the girl. Cuts over like, a, I don't like what you just said. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, marry me, bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's shot like that, like... In what is kind of an important <laughs> moment that includes a really awkward joke that makes her mad, we get reactions from nobody else who's in this Everybody's room. Everybody's just like, uh... Yeah, yeah, everyone else has just ceased to exist. I've only seen something like that in, like, one other movie in recent memory, and that was Single Moms Club, when I didn't know that there was a board Well, I'll tell you, the Perry movies are great to watch because it'll cut to people that just aren't paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. What? Oh, yeah. And so the black guy looks at Amber, the girl's like, Hey, hey, Clay likes you! She's, like, embarrassed, and so is he, because that is really awkward. And they decide, like, okay, so why don't we actually, like, go out? They have, like, a meet-cute in a grocery store where they're debating pasta, and she's asking him about more of his beliefs and his rules and stuff like that. And then she, she says something like, I like things fluffy duffy. And he's like, um life isn't all just fluffy duffy and she's like well life isn't all rules mr religioso this they don't have very good chemistry <laughs> or dialogue apparently she is she is honestly not bad like i can they have zero chemistry together i can she's really pretty and she's not bad in this and i can picture in a much better movie she's probably just fine he is Oh my god. Um, <laughs> he's bad. He also wrote and directed the movie. Oh! So, that, okay. He also wrote and directed the movie. It's it's the room of Christian films. I wish! Because then, like, <laughs> then his performance would have been somewhat lively. Would have been wrong, but it would have been kind of lively, and, at least. And there would have been football. This is just a lot of talking like this. Those are my rules, I'm sorry. I uh, made a pact with Jesus, 
And then there's a lot of, like, insert shots that are just randomly placed through the movie where he's solemnly walking along railroad tracks with, like, his hoodie up and his pants in his pocket. And <laughs> Fucking, you gotta love the egotistical writer-director yeah. star. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna brood now. A lot of brooding for no reason. Because he hasn't gotten laid in nine years. Because who would like this man? So this fucking audience in here, like, I don't know, maybe the mom and her two kids liked it. Maybe the old couple in the back liked it. I know the guy sitting across from me fucking liked it. He was eating this shit up. Every stupid joke in this movie... Okay, because the girl works in a flower shop, and the girl works in a flower shop, and then um, one of the ladies says, uh, I've never met a man that I like better than chocolate, and I've been married three times. The fucking guy sitting across from me is like, ha 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 ha! I don't know where that guy came from. He wandered in during the previews. He looked like Luis from Sesame Street. Oh, and I just sat at my desk and did paperwork. No, you you should you should have been there. <laughs> Don't you kind of wish you were there a, a li little bit? The Don't you wish you kind of saw this a little bit just just to see this level uh -huh. of ho horribleness? But I'm getting so much enjoyment out of the fact that you had to go by yourself. <laughs> This is way worse than when I had to go see uh, the Harrison Ford paranoia by myself <laughs> or blended. This is way worse. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, 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 I just like, yeah, I, I, I've been peoples more than once. <laughs> so and, pe and peoples, <laughs> yeah, for, yeah. as a matter of fact. <laughs> I blended. And, and I've did. seen a lot of really bad movies at your request, <laughs> and it just, I. I you know, someone had to this see. This might this. make me a shitty friend, but I'm reveling in your pain right now. <laughs> <laughs> my sins are washed, Father. I pay my dues, boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you can go to heaven, which we know because of movies is for real. I ain't going to heaven. I'm giving this movie a bad review. <laughs> <laughs> so they go on the, their first date. Is uh, their first date date? Their first date is, um, they go to church. They go see the, not like church church, well, they, they go to the church so that they can talk to, I guess, the reverend or whatever, so they can talk to the pastor. And the pastor then gives them books, a book to guide them on on their courtship and everything. And this book is just series of incredibly I'm betting it's a book you can actually buy too. I think it's called like um red, yellow, green. Um something like that. Like red, it. yellow, green. And it's a bunch of question a bunch of very intrusive questions that you would never ask anybody on a first date. So their first date has to do with um asking whether or not she has experience with children, whether or not she's any good with children. And when she can't answer that on their first date together, when she can't answer that, he takes her to her friend's baby to determine whether or not she is any good good at cutting up small pieces of pears in which she can feed the baby. <clears throat> and they continue to use this book throughout the entire movie. Did you find it? Um, red, yellow, green. That's not it. It was a picture of a stoplight on it. Because you're because like if it's a bad answer, it's red. If it's good, it's green. If it's kind of a maybe, it's yellow. Okay. So stuff like that. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I want to know if this book exists. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it does at this fucking church. They use it throughout the whole entire movie. And then later on, when they're like sitting in the grass together, that's when he's reading the book and asks her how many sexual partners she has. And when she says to him, can we actually have a fucking normal date for once? He says, oh, what? So we can just have sex and then like then get to know each other afterwards? This is the guy that we're supposed to fucking like in this movie. And who was... 
at one point, a, a serial date rapist. Apparently. Yeah, apparently. I have no... This girl in the movie is she's not she is actually kind of adorable and that makes me hate this movie even more that she that this person is ending up with this person and then when you find out what brought her to this town it's because she was in a series of very abusive relationships when we first meet her she has a cast on her arm because she got away from her abusive boyfriend who broke her arm because she put on the wrong kind of nail polish and so she left town she left town. She keeps a jar on her fridge that's just like a bunch of ones and change and fives and stuff like that. So, like, in case she needs, like, gas and everything, she keeps that, like, on top of her fridge. And that comes into play at the end of the movie. So, <clears throat> so a lot of what we're seeing here is, yeah, like, them... He never wants to be alone with her. When he invites her over to his house, he makes sure that his elderly aunt is also there. His elderly aunt, who likes to play dead throughout the whole movie. It, it strikes me that the guy who wrote and directed this, A, has never been in a healthy relationship. Ever. <laughs> if and he's it, anything like he is in this movie, he needs help. And, and has probably been rejected by a lot of women. I... <laughs> <laughs> and so this is how he justifies it mm -hmm. in his brain is, well, it's not God's path. Mm -hmm. When you when it explains later on why he is the way he is, he said that he was in a relationship with a woman who he went out and cheated on her with her best friend, and it was supposed to be like his first serious relationship. He cheated on her with her best friend, and she got mad, and then hooked up with somebody else, and ended up having a kid by this person, but then also got married or something. So he hates the fact that he hurt this other person so much that he decided to open the Bible, and then... This is what he says in the movie. He says, sometimes I, he said, I kind of, he says, at first I hated that I opened the Bible because when I read it, it moved me so much that that meant I couldn't laugh at it anymore. So he's like crying because he hurt this girl like several years ago by cheating on her. Like, dude, this is fucking nine years ago, man. Oh, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back to this laughing at the fucking Bible thing. Uh-huh. I am an atheist. Mm-hmm. I have no way in organized religion for myself. I have no belief in it. Yeah. And this goes back into I, the problem I think a lot of those kinds of Christians don't understand the majority of atheists. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't give a rat's ass about your faith until you try and force it into our lives in some way. Mm -hmm. I've read the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I will laugh at Christians because they're fucking crazy fucking people. There's nothing to laugh at in the Bible. Mm. Not not as a concept, not as mm. a book. Like, there's great shit in there. Like, mm. the basis of a lot of our civilization mm. is in that book. But Christians are I, whack. A I, lot of Christians are whack. Christians, jobs. Christians who do most stuff Christi like this. Most Christians, Christians do stuff like this. Most Christians aren't. Most Christians uh -huh. are nice, lovely people that have a moral and ethical code because of their faith. Yeah. Kudos. Mm -hmm. Guys like this are fucking whack jobs. <laughs> and we laugh at people like that because uh -huh. they're fucking whack jobs. <laughs> Not because of your faith, because you're a whack job. You should have been there, man. We probably could have had a good laugh at this fucking movie. Maybe. I don't know. Like, I guarantee you Sarah would probably would have left about 15 or 20 minutes in when, it had, when he was training her to, like, cut up baby food and shit like that on their first date. Oh my god. Like, I was sitting there with my jaw dropped. On the first date, cutting up baby food. And w one, how does he know how to do this? I don't know. Uh, it's something he practices when he's by himself. Oh, he doesn't need to know how to do it, because he'll have the wife to do it. He doesn't have, need to know how to do that. That's why he's fucking... That's why he's reading the book, because the book... The red, white, and blue book is he's got to pick somebody who's got good child hands who can cut up pears and feed children. Because otherwise, fuck you. That's what this movie teaches. Otherwise, fuck you. You're not a good enough person for me. You want to hear about the bachelor party scene? I do. Whose bachelor party is? The black guy. Oh, the black guy. Yes, yes. So there's a big bachelor party in a hotel room. And knock on the door... 
of course you know who's going to be on the other side of the door. It's going to be a stripper. It's like, hotel security! Do do. Okay, it's a male stripper? <laughs> no, but there's like the bodyguard is oh, there. Okay. Like the bodyguard is there, and then the music starts playing, the woman sits down the guy on the chair, she starts dancing around him, the dude looks, the Clay, the main guy, looks pissed off, because what did he think was gonna happen? And, and, one, what did he think was gonna happen, and it's not your party, motherfucker. Yeah. He turns off the, he walks up, turns off the music, gets in his friend's face and says, what are you doing? This is wrong. Think of the woman at home. Think of your kid. What are you doing, man? He's getting a lap dance. Yeah. And so... Get the fuck out of my party, you <laughs> asshole. <laughs> and so he easily becomes the party pooper here, and he decides to leave. He's like, well, I can't, I can't handle this. I'm leaving. And then the dude getting the lap dance is like like he looks at the guy who ordered the strippers like you shouldn't have done that man and then he gets up and follows clay outside he's like i'm sorry you know i didn't know that was gonna happen he's like that's okay so that, so the guy who's getting married is gonna go off in the limo with everyone else and then the bouncer and the stripper come up to the main guy and says listen up motherfucker <laughs> listen up motherfucker you just screwed her out of about 200 dollars worth of tips which is true legitimate fucking point yeah and he's like, mm -hmm. and then the stripper looks at him and goes like, you think you're better than me and walks off. Good. Like fucking good. Someone needs to tell this guy he's a fucking asshole. So the most likable character in the movie so far is, is the stripper. stripper is the stripper and the bouncer. Easily the two most realistic characters in this movie. Anybody in the service industry would be angry over that. Yes. Yeah. And they get it, so they get into... And not not only did they waste, she not get those tips, the dude who paid for the surf in the first place... Oh, he brought that up, too. He's like, you owe me $200, asshole. <laughs> the guy's like, no, I don't, and walks away. Like, fuck you! No longer friends. Yeah, and... And so, throughout the movie, the the girl knows that he used to make these Girls Gone Wild tapes. Like, she has a DVD of it sitting, like, on her table. And she's like, I don't need to watch it because the person who made those tapes does not exist anymore. Um, and then eventually she does watch it. And she's watching it with, like, wine and, like, crying. Like, <laughs> did she think Girls Gone Wild was something else? <laughs> well, although, okay, all right. It, granted, what I've told you about these tapes wouldn't yeah. make anybody cry. <laughs> the concept of them makes me sad inside. Yeah. It, it's, it's girls you with... You used to rape people. <laughs> it's girls with low self-esteem. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, I mean... Yeah, those tapes are repugnant, but they're not that bad. They're not actually filming girls just weeping and taking, showing their tits against their will. <laughs> I mean, they're drunk and stupid, and they're being taken advantage of. Yes, and absolutely, but mm. to the extent that, said that this movie shows, yeah, that 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 this movie shows, where unless there is some parts of Girls Gone Wild that I'm totally missing, uh, well, I'm, sure, I'm sure they edited out the sad parts. <laughs> Them. Well, they wanted to make money off yeah. of them. Uh, so they ended up yeah. the sad part. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't oh my. like my porn to be sad, personally. Nah, nah, that's not good. I like to see a <laughs> smile when I'm being <laughs> off. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to jerk off to some fucking, like, forced entry or yeah, nah, nah. sex wish, the porno spoof of Death Witch. <laughs> Real movie, too. That sounds awesome, actually. <laughs> um, so they had, they kind of break up towards the end, like most romance, like the third oh, eye yeah. breakup thing. Because they have that argument about, like, uh, uh, oh, she says, she says to him, like, yeah, like, can't you just fucking be normal or something? And he's like, no, that I can't do that. And so um, she goes out and gets drunk. She goes out and gets drunk, and he almost hooks up with his ex-girlfriend who is in town for that wedding, and she goes to his house, and it looks like they're about to... It kind of looks like they are making out. Um, and then it fades, and she almost sleeps with the... She, the main girl in the movie, Amber, she almost sleeps with the shock jock. Um, but there's this symbolic moment. There's this symbolic moment where 
the shock jock and her go back to his hotel room. He goes inside, and she's waiting just outside the door. Get it? She's waiting just outside the door and doesn't want to cross in to sleep with the shock jock. And then this is simultaneously... Um, Clay is about to sleep with his ex-girlfriend. And then it cuts to the next day... Amber didn't sleep with the shock jock. Clay let his sad ex-girlfriend sleep in his house while he slept outside in the car. <laughs> and then we get to the ending. Because I don't think I'm forgetting anything else. Um, maybe some bad lines here and there I might be forgetting. I mean, it says a lot about a movie's dialogue when one of the first lines in the movie is, That's a lot of hooey. <laughs> what? It was a lot of hooey. Uh, there was a lot of fucking hooey in this oh movie. Man, I fucking hate my job, but at least I wasn't at this movie. I'm telling you, man. I don't think you mean that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. I do. <laughs> I don't think you do, man. I don't think you mean that. Dude. <laughs> oh man <laughs> part of me a very small part of uh -huh. me is like oh god this sounds like a train wreck I kind of wish I had been there the other part of me still laughing at your pain <laughs> it was very painful yeah. and then it gets to the ending which he gets lectured by his aunt who says like look we get it you're a good guy you don't need to go this far you're a good person just be a good dude. Like, if this was all building up for him to learn this lesson to, fu to like, fucking, like, chill, then that's one thing. But still, that's not how this movie reads. This movie reads like he is totally supposed to be the hero through 100% of this fucking movie. When he goes out, when he, he, there's one part where it's, a lot like in Fifty Shades of Grey when he knows that she's out getting drunk and he keeps, he's going all over town looking for her, like storming through nightclubs and like banging on her door and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's and not, not that, not that in, not in that like, oh, he heard he, she's in trouble and he yeah. has to go find her. No, he's being no. creepy. Yeah, he's being creepy. Like there's a similar sequence like that in Fifty Shades of Grey. So, okay, so he finally sets up something really romantic at the end, and you kind of think, like, okay, I guess, is that supposed to be the moral here, to just fucking lighten up? Whatever, I still didn't need to see a fucking movie about this guy, and there's going to be a lot of people who probably, like, fucking are going along with what this guy is saying. If you go along with what this guy is saying, and you meet somebody who feels the exact same way fine. Like, okay, I hope you live long and happy together. Kudos, you fucking found Having each other. Having sex through a hole in a sheet. Yeah, you, fu you, <laughs> found each you found each other, and you're happy. That's fine. That's one thing. Um, none of my fucking business. But in this situation, it feels like a guy initiating a girl into a cult. And it's a little awkward to watch. Uh, oh, no, man. Carrie, no! Run! Run, Carrie! Oh my god. And so it ends like he he gets like a chariot. No, he gets like a fancy old timey car with a driver that looks like like Alfred should be driving or something. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Um and he picks her up like no, he doesn't pick her up. His like a dude who's in it throughout the movie picks her up and um he she goes to like get like a nice dress and get her hair done and her nails done and and all that she looks beautiful she gets her nails done and all of that and then a girl come of uh, the lady at the flower shop comes up and gets her flowers it's starting out like i'm watching this movie like okay well i guess if anything this is kind of romantic like if you were to just look at like this scene i'm like hey, okay maybe this is kind of romantic whatever and um <clears throat> so then they get to the grocery store, which is where they kind of had their sort of meet. It wasn't the first time that they met, but like, it wasn't the first time that they met, but, um, <clears throat> uh, it was where they kind of had like a legitimate conversation that didn't involve her standing outside while he fixes her shit. And so anyway, he, 
they get to the grocery store and there's like candles all over the place. There's like dude playing a cello, um, dude playing a cello, violin, like all of that stuff is decked out in candles. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess maybe he has changed. Maybe he's actually going to kiss her at the end. Maybe he's going to act like a fucking normal person at the end. Oh, no, because she fucking gets there in the aisle that he is standing in, and he proposes to her in the middle of the baby food aisle. In the middle of the baby food aisle. And that's not supposed to be a joke, because she looks, she sees the baby food sitting there, and she's like, oh, subtle. And he's like, a little on the nose. <sighs> and... Oh god. He gives her a ring. She moves in to kiss him. Or no, he moves in to kiss her, but instead kisses her on the cheek. And then still shot black and white movie ends. Woo! <laughs> oh my god, I'm so glad I wasn't there. <laughs> so, so um long and short of it, would you recommend it? Um, I'm trying to think of a situation where as a bad movie you might be able to watch it because this movie would actually be pretty hilarious to watch with Sarah <laughs> I can see that <laughs> so in that regard um, like watching this movie with Lindsay would be pretty amazing <laughs> like I was texting her beforehand, like, check out this shit I'm about to go see. She writes back, still shot of, like, the movie website out in New York. Like, fuck, no showtimes around <laughs> me. Damn it. Um, so, like, a situation like that, you're watching it at home. Okay. Okay, you might get some laughs. Um, don't go see it by yourself. <laughs> at 4.20 in the afternoon no. on a Wednesday? At 4.20 in the afternoon. On a, I don't give a fuck what time it is. Like, if it's fucking 11 in the morning... 4.20 in the afternoon makes it funnier. <laughs> yeah, 4.20 in the afternoon. Because why not? It's playing at 4 fucking 20 and you got this fucking movie named after a hand job. All right. One for fucking old-fashioned. That's, That's the not stupidest even thing I've ever said. It's psychotic. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly... The tagline of the movie is Chivalry Makes a Comeback. Because that's There's chivalry. nothing chivalrous <laughs> about that. No, that. That is this Oh my god, was he wearing definition. a fedora and did he have a neck beard? At the end of the movie, when he proposes to her, he's wearing a fedora. Of course he is. He's got... Like, he looks yeah, like... Kind of, he is. He, he looks like an old surfer dude. Like, he looks like... Did you, did you ever watch... Um, did you ever watch uh, um, The Shield? Sometimes, yeah. Do you remember the guy who was in their group, uh, Lem, who yeah, always wore yeah. the hoodie and had the fly? He looks kind of like him, but Lem's a far fucking better actor than this guy is. I've anyone in this movie, I've ne I've not seen in any. There's one girl who looks kind of like Sarah, um, like Sarah when she had her hair really short. One of the girls who works in the flower shop. Oh, did you find a picture? Yeah, that's him. <laughs> yeah, he looks just like that in the movie, except his hair is not. His hair is not quite as like stot. More like what he would look like with that hair. He's he directed just, seven movies. And he's directed a bunch of shorts. Um. <clears throat> oh yeah. He's directed a bunch of short films. Well, th there's at least one other full length. Oh, fuck. Um, yeah, he looks like that if, like, he didn't... He, he just woke up and got in front of the camera and didn't really do anything with his hair. Oh, wow, these people... This is just a collection of... Yeah. I'm guessing that, that old lady's the aunt. Yeah, that's the aunt. <laughs> that's, man. So, no, I don't... Uh, don't... Uh, if you want to take a... If you have, like, a... Say it's, like, me, you, and Sarah... And you want to take a gamble to like maybe be the only ones in the theater? That would be one thing, but that's taking a gamble. Um, I would say like, I would say like, wait until you got a bunch of drinks and you're chilling out in your house, and 
then okay, sure. <laughs> if you can find a copy someplace, I'm sure you can. No, like, yeah. Once it comes out on D, the identicals out on D. I need to show you guys the identical. Oh my god, <laughs> the identical. That's oh man, that's a bad movie that gave me fucking joy. Religious <laughs> Elvis Presley movie. Oh, with yeah. Ray Liotta and Joey Pants and Seth Green. <laughs> that this movie was. It was. <sighs> It was so hard to sit through. <laughs> like, I was... I, I'll have to tell you how I was sitting in the theater. There was a lot of this... Well, my hood was always up. My hood was always up. My coat was off, but I had my hoodie up. I was always off. There was a lot of... There was a lot of this. There was, in the baby scenes, there was a lot of... <laughs> the lights went out. There was a lot of, like, mouth agape like that there was towards the end of it when it just when like my body just wanted to leave whether or not i was telling it to <laughs> there was a lot of sitting like with my knees up <laughs> like that oh, at the man. end of the movie and then i got the fuck out of there i got the fuck out of that fucking thing and i was comfortable in my Comfy office chair, <laughs> hell right room, listening to my iPod. I had Wendy's beforehand. That was good. Oh, okay. I had Wendy's beforehand. I got a Coke Zero at the movie theater. That was all right. Yeah, that was all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's your impression of this? After... It sounds like a glorious, horrible, really misogynistic in a way. Like... There should be disclaimers and warnings. Like, yeah. if you find yourself in this situation, fucking run. Because the name of the movie is Old Fashioned, the opening title cards are done, like, on silent movie font and screens. Like, even with the sound of, like, a film reel playing in the background. <sighs> oh, my God, that's horrible. It does it to introduce the characters, too. Um... I, that's my thoughts on Old Fashioned. Um, I don't know where this fucking movie came from. I know nothing about the people who made it, other than what they look like now. Thanks. Uh, so, no, I would advise to fucking stay away from this goddamn fucking thing, at least theatrically, unless you're having a bad fucking movie night, or lost a goddamn fucking bet. I complain a lot. I've complained in past videos of, like... I hate the fact that we get these goddamn religious movies, but it takes us a month to get, like, award contenders. You know, I can live with that now. I kind of like the fact that I'll click on the movie theater website, any, and any fucking random thing like this will be on it. I mean, ev okay, if eventually, yeah, we get, like, you know, the four-star movies and uh, some great movies and stuff like that, your Birdmans and things like that. All right, if we got to wait a few weeks for that, but we get shit like this all the time that just sneaks up it's, on it's us. It's a weird trade-off. It really yeah, is. Like, I, can, I can live with that. I'm going to start checking. I need to start checking the Parkway Point showtimes every week now. You really do. I really fucking do. I really fucking do. Because if I did it last week, I probably wouldn't have been at this shit by myself. I know we missed one. Apparently we... I don't know if we did, but apparently there was a religious movie like four weeks ago called Pass the Light. I don't know if it came to Springfield. I just heard of this like yesterday. Um, I don't know if that came to Springfield, but it probably did. Wasn't that the... Uh, I, Pass the Light... Wasn't that a concert movie? I think? No, you're thinking of um, Hillsong. Uh, okay. I never came to Springfield. Eh. <laughs> uh, well, I... If I gave my final thoughts, it'd just be me repeating myself. So, tomorrow, we've got um, movies that I won't be alone for. <laughs> um, tomorrow, we've got Chappie, Second Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Oh, yeah, I'm so looking forward to that. I'm, I'm going to go home right now and watch On Golden Pond Cocoon. <laughs> Those are better than the shit I just sat there. <laughs> Actually, I love Cocoon. That's I like a great Cocoon. Movie. Yeah, I like Cocoon. Fuck yeah. And, uh, Gutenberg, man. Here's something to think about. In the making of co Cocoon. Think about how old you think they are in your brain. Wilford Brimley, only in his 50s. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> only in his 50s. The yeah. man looked 80 yeah. in his 50s. <laughs> 
Well, living out there in Antarctica aged him a little yeah, bit. Well, <laughs> it would age anybody. <laughs> Fucking. Oh, uh, what? A, there's a, oh, unfinished business. Yeah, I'm gonna be at like two movies tomorrow. <laughs> I will give. I will probably give them four star reviews compared to what I saw last night or tonight. Okay. All right. See you guys later. Bye.